Whales are some of the most extraordinary animals on our planet. Their evolutionary history is a fascinating tale, starting out as small semi-aquatic hoofed mammals and eventually giving rise to some of the biggest animals to have ever existed. The blue whale is often stated to be the largest animal that's ever lived, but in recent years, some potential contenders for this title have been unearthed from the fossil record. One such contender was the aptly named Perucetus Colossus, announced to the world in August of 2023. This prehistoric cetacean, the scientific name for whales, dolphins and porpoises, lived around 39 million years ago and, unsurprisingly, was discovered in Peru. The fossils that were found of this prehistoric whale included 13 vertebrae, 4 ribs and a bit of a pelvic bone. The bones themselves were already pretty large in scale, but the really spectacular thing about these fossils is how swollen they are. The backbones and the ribs are highly pachyostotic, the term used to describe a thickening of the bone mass. But this isn't the result of some abnormal injury to the bones, it's an adaptation to shallow diving, similar to what we see with the skeletons of manatees and dugongs, which also have very thick ribs. As only a partial skeleton of Perucetus was discovered, a lot of what's thought about its potential lifestyle and dimensions remains speculative. Perucetus was a kind of prehistoric cetacean called a Basilosaurid, which includes the famous, very large and almost serpentine Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus was an apex predator of the Eocene oceans, and would have lived around the same time as Perucetus. But the paleontologists who discovered Perucetus hypothesize a different mode of life for this whale. Rather than being an open water predator, they envision Perucetus as a slow swimming animal that would feed along the seabed, considering its very dense bones. Since no skull material is currently known, it's not clear what exactly it might have been eating, but perhaps it was suction or filter feeding on organisms along the sea floor, or perhaps even scavenging on sunken carcasses. Essentially, they picture it as an enormous cetacean version of a Cyrenian, the scientific name for the manatees and dugong, although they don't think it was strictly herbivorous. Perucetus also received a lot of attention for another claim made in this initial paper, that it might have been the most massive animal to have ever existed. Scaling up the limited remains known of the cetacean, it was given an estimated total length of 17 to 20 meters, or about 56 to 66 feet, and a very wide range of mass estimates, from 85 metric tons at the lower end, to a whopping 340 metric tons at the extreme high end. Going by these greater mass estimates, Perucetus would therefore have been far more massive than a modern blue whale which most researchers agree can achieve maximum weights approaching 200 tons. So these are some pretty impressive claims, and if Perucetus really was this large, then it would significantly alter our understanding of the evolution of gigantism among cetaceans, since it would indicate that the most massive whales actually evolved 30 million years earlier than previously realised. However, since the publication of this species, some doubt has been cast on the idea that Perucetus was a supersized whale. In February of 2024, other paleontologists published a rebuttal to the claims of Perucetus' giant size, finding that the prehistoric cetacean likely did not exceed blue whales in mass, and instead probably weighed somewhere between 60 and 114 tons, depending on total body length. These researchers then also estimated the body mass of the largest recorded modern blue whales, at some 33 metres long, or 108 feet, at 270 tonnes. So, going by these estimates, Perucetus was pretty far off from achieving blue whale dimensions. But now, a different team of paleontologists have published another response to the claims of gigantic sizes in Perucetus. Using restorations of the prehistoric whale's proportions and total volume, these researchers have downsized Perucetus even further, finding that a length of between 15 to 16 meters, or 49 to 52 feet, and a mass of 35 to 40 tons is far more probable. But more than that, using their methods, they found that the largest blue whales likely don't get bigger than 30 meters in length or 200 tons. These paleontologists created accurate skeletal profiles of various extinct and living marine mammals, utilizing as many available specimens and known bones as possible for the extinct species, and taking into account the extent of different soft tissue types that would be present as well. These skeletal profiles were then used to generate reliable three-dimensional models. Using these models, they produced estimates of the volumes of the various animals, including Perucetus. 
as well as cetaceans, sirenians were also used, since Perucetus does seem to have had some similarities to these other mammals. They did this first by creating scaled down physical plasticine models of their volumetric reconstructions to measure how much water they displaced when put in a plastic cylinder. As well as this, they also applied a technique called graphic double integration, or GDI for short. This method involves taking two views of the animal's reconstructed body, usually from the side and from the top, and then slicing it up. The volume of each individual slice is then calculated by multiplying the cross-sectional area of each slice by the length. Then, all the volumes of the slices can be added up to get a good estimate of the total volume of the organism. It's a pretty straightforward technique that's been shown to work very effectively. The researchers compared the results of the water displacement method with those of the GDI method in the various living and extinct whales plus the Cyrenians, and found that they mostly agreed with each other. In addition, they compared their mass estimates to modern specimens that had actually been directly weighed, again to test the reliability of their models. These comparisons revealed that the calculated masses were mostly consistent with the average weights of measured individuals, though they were usually a little bit on the higher end. Still, they were within reason considering the variations seen within a single species. So then, applying these tested methods is how they got to the new mass estimate for Perucetus of 35 to 40 tonnes, and considering that their estimates tended to be slightly greater than the weighed modern specimens, this estimate is already towards the likely maximum size for the species. Applying their calculation to the modern blue whale as well, they found that 195 tonnes is around the probable maximum for one of these animals. This mass estimate is based on the maximum reliably measured length of a blue whale being 30.5 meters, since although measurements of up to 33 meters have been recorded, they are somewhat doubtful. The weight of a more average sized blue whale was found to likely be between 100 and 150 tons. So what does all this mean for our picture of whale evolution? Well, if Perucetus really was the heaviest cetacean ever, then it would suggest that gigantism in whales evolved about 10 million years after they became fully marine, a rather remarkable expansion of body size in a relatively short period of geologic time. However, this newly revised body mass range would put Perucetus at a scale that is similar to that of other large members of the Basilosaurid lineage of whales. In short then, this is more consistent with what was previously understood about whale size evolution, with the truly enormous cetaceans only evolving in the last few millions of years, once Ice Age marine conditions appeared and much larger dimensions became advantageous. So this is a fascinating new study that demonstrates the usefulness of these volumetric techniques for more accurately estimating body masses of extinct animals. It also shows how understanding the size of an animal is important in the greater context of understanding a particular lineage's evolution, especially when it comes to cetaceans. I'd like to say a big thank you to the authors of this new paper for giving me early access to their findings, and I hope you've all enjoyed watching this 7 Days of Science special report. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, including our Cretaceous tier supporters Corey Peterson, Andrew Kawam, Giotist, Clara Middleton, Drew Srivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Lena Rose, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, Sammy Voss, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Timothy N. Tedrow, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.